Well, if you don't know what this is, it's a realistic, although this one is actually badged Radio Shack, it's a realistic DX394 HF receiver. Uh, from the mid-1990s, it's the last real communication receiver that uh, Radio Shack, or Tandy as we knew them in the UK here, uh, offered. It's a general coverage uh, receiver. It goes from around 150 kilohertz up to 30 megahertz with AM, SSB and CW modes. Uh, again, as uh, I'm often asked to point out where this is the case, this radio does not do FM mode on HF. So uh, you won't be able to listen to uh, FM Citizens Band or 10 meters FM with this radio. But other than that, it probably does most of uh, what the average listener wanted for an HF receiver uh, back in the mid-1990s. We'll just have a quick look at the control. You can see there's a fairly sizable LCD display here. and We'll turn the radio on in a moment and you can see how that works. But uh, we've got a headphone socket here, 3.5mm headphone socket. We've got uh, a volume control. We've got an RF gain control. We have the uh, mode switch, and you can see the various modes, uh, standby AM, lower and upper sideband, and two CW positions. And we have a fine-tune control. And in the centre of the radio, we have, of course, the tuning knob. We have buttons here for altering the tuning steps. Or various buttons here that uh, we can use in connection with the timer. The radio has a clock built in. You can see it's flashing there. Uh, we've got a dimmer button noise blanker a lock button and we switch the power on with the uh, power button here then we have um, band and meter band settings frequency button so we can punch a frequency uh, directly into the receiver okay we have up and down step buttons here so we can step up and down through the bands have a clear button. I'm assuming that's to clear any mistaken entries when you're keying in a frequency. And the programming button again, this is to do with uh, the memories and, and sort of scanning functions. I think there's some limited scanning function with this radio. Let's power it up and see what the display looks like. Just turn the volume down there. So you can see we've got a backlit LCD display. We've got a, a kind of mock up of an analog meter here within the display. We have the meter band displayed here, the timer also, and we can see that we're currently, um, it's going to step, we're going to tune in five kilohertz uh, increments. And that means if we press these up and down buttons here, you can see we step up in five kilohertz. Or if we use the tuning knob, we step in five kilohertz, so that would be ideal for an AM broadcast band. By pressing the band button, we can step through various uh, various bands, LW and uh, MW here, for example. A meter band button. And the frequency button. We can enter a frequency 6200, enter. And we're on 6200 kilohertz. Okay. Dimmer button basically turns the backlight off. And uh, the fine tune, you'll see it actually registers on the display when we turn the fine tune control. But it tunes in, um, I guess, uh, 100 hertz steps when we use the fine tuning. So let's just have a look at the rear of the receiver. This receiver is missing. It should have a built in whip here, but it's missing that, unfortunately. But I guess over the years, most of them, uh, most of them lose those anyway. And uh, I'll just uh, go a bit closer with the camera here and uh, show you the various things we've got on the rear. We've got an attenuation switch, which can switch in 20 dBs of attenuation. Got an SO239 antenna connector. It's currently connected up to my uh, Wellbrook loop here. We've got um, a phono socket for a high impedance antenna. We've got a tape. Uh, out socket uh, if we want to record we've got a socket for an external loudspeaker 
We can feed 12 volts in here to run off a 12 volt supply. Okay, we've also got uh, a ground or earth terminal here. And uh, we've got the mains lead. This, this radio is currently connected up to the, uh, to the main supply. So you've got an inbuilt uh, power supply in these. And there it is, the DX394. Um, we'll have a tear around in another video. I think this is incidentally an A model. There were two uh, models. Some say there was also a C model, but I'm not so sure on that. This looks like it's probably an A model. There's no sticker on the rear to donate it, uh, denote it's a B model. The B model is um, said to be uh, a fair bit better than the A. There were some modifications done in the factory. But this is what it is. I think it's an earlier model. We'll see how it performs. It's got quite a nice clear display, as you can see. Um, the audio uh, out seems to be reasonable. If we can pick anything up here quickly. Um, just have a quick turn down the band. We've got a little bit of muting as we tune. Try maybe um, an ammeter band. Let's try frequency seven one zero zero. Enter. And let's try switching to lower side band. See if we've got any uh, broadcast stations up here. You see, we've now defaulted to a one kilohertz step, so we can probably step up to five there. Get through the band a bit quicker. Not much around. Let's try the 90 meter band frequency. One five four zero zero. Enter. See what we get. Quite clear, I think. Included in the World Health Organization emergency use list. Helping to gather the anti epidemic supplies first. Yeah, I'm uh, part of a people. So, um, I haven't had this receiver very long. And you may well agree with me from my um, initial impressions, just tuning it around there. Seems quite reasonable on AM uh, for the broadcast stations. Uh, maybe not so competent on single side band. Seemed a little bit noisy there, but we did manage to tune in a few, uh, few stations on 40 meters. But we'll have a closer look at this in another video. It's just a little introduction of the DX394, well-known receiver. I had one of these years ago uh, when uh, just around the time Tandy's in the UK was closing, which must be close on 20 years ago now. I'm guessing it must have been a B model I had then, but uh, I sold it a long time ago and I can't really remember. 
I uh, owned a number of receivers. I didn't have it very long. But we'll have a play around with this. And we'll see particularly how it compares to the low H1, HF150, which um, is another radio we've recently got here. And it was manufactured at or around the same time as this DX394. Of course, the DX394 was a bit more available than the low HF150. If you had a Tandy or Radio Shack store anywhere near you in the uh, 1990s, uh, you would have seen this uh, this radio in the window and certainly in the uh, the Tandy catalogue. Anyway, there it is, the uh, DX394 from Realistic Radio Shack. Thank you for watching.